<clears throat> hey, um, Joe Gill back. Hey, I'm here to kind of talk about a controversial subject that's got nothing to do with what I normally talk about, which is sex and stuff like that. But I've got an opinion of it. Uh, it's been in the news basically since Trump has been president. And I've seen billboards all over L.A. that say stomp, stomp out hate, resist hate and all this other bullshit. Um, I definitely just have some opinions on it. And uh, I don't know, I guess I just kind of want to make, uh, make a video of it, even though it's totally off subject. But I figured it would be good because it's so taboo. Um, here's the bottom line. Um, you got everybody asking those questions. And frankly, I, f I feel these people are kind of idiots who un don't understand hatred. They don't under, if they don't understand hate, then they don't understand anger, you know, and you got to be pretty fucking stupid if you don't understand what it means to get angry or pissed off at something or to under, or even to understand that anger leads to hatred. I mean, they only they only talk about it in in every fucking Star Wars film. I mean, about turning to the dark side, and uh, not that I'm a big Star Wars geek, but I was a big Star Wars fan. But you know, Yoda even talked about that. You know, fear fear turns to anger, anger um, anger turns to hate, then hatred turns to suffering. You know, um, which is kind of true. <clears throat> and I think it's fear and ignorance is what turns to anger and then anger turns into hate. But, you know, there's temporary hate, there's long-term hate, or there's just momentary loss of hate. A good example of very momentary loss of hate is that thing that happened with Kramer or the guy that was on Michael Richards on Seinfeld and he yelled the N-word at, at the at the guy when he was trying to do stand-up comedian. Uh, at, uh, when he yelled at the black guy called the, or whatever who was heckling him. Do I think that uh, that guy is racist or prejudiced? No, I don't. But his level of anger just shot way up and he used, and he used uh, that racial slur. But anyway, before I go off rambling, bottom line is, when it comes to racial hate and prejudice, you know what? You're all prejudiced. You're all racist. You know, you're or you're all racist or you're all what I I don't even like to call racist. Let's just call it cultural culturalist. Because uh I don't necessarily believe it's really how somebody looks. How somebody looks or whatever. <clears throat> I mean, as far as their looks is what they can't control like the color of their skin or the way their face is shaped or how tall they are or how short they are or whatever. People can't help that, whether they're retarded, whether they're ugly, whether they're ugly or even whether they're, well, not necessarily whether they're smart or whatever type of looks that they can't control. But when it comes to like getting tattoos or uh, putting on piercings or makeup, and, um, you know, human beings generally have control of that. And yes, that's generally as far as uh, prejudice, where prejudice of somebody or, or hatred or dislike of somebody's appearance. And that, uh, that's uh, as far as looks, that's what um, that type of racism ha hates it. It could be somebody with tattoos, nose piercings, their hairstyle. See, all this is my choice, like this. This is making a statement right here. This Van Halen t-shirt. I'm letting people know. Yeah, I'm letting people know. And yeah, do I understand that there are people out here who hate this fucking group? Or there are people that will point to this guy, David Lee Roth. Oh, well, I don't really like David Lee Roth. I liked it better with Sammy Hagar. Okay, that's fine. You know, racism, racism to me and prejudice is also just strong opinions. You know, it's opinions. Opinions can be kind of considered prejudice or racist or whatever. 
but we all have them. We all, we all are fucking prejudiced. And I'm going to give you examples of that. But some of the stupid shit I've heard over the years, like Rodney King's, can't we all get along? Well, great, Rodney. I'll answer that. The truth is fucking no. And this t-shirt is a perfect example. Because I understand and know that not everybody likes fucking Van Halen. But guess what? I have the choice. I won't hang out with them. Do I necessarily hate them or whatever? I will if they come up to me and constantly give me shit about liking this music. I was heavy metal back in high school. And I'll get to high school. High school is another example of how we're programmed to be racist. Because think back to your high school. Were you all separated? I mean, my high school, I went to high school in the 80s. It was all jocks at one end, punk rockers at another, heavy metalists, mods or scas, mods or scas or new, new wave. Well, my hair is kind of new wave now, you know, new wave. That's people who liked like Duran Duran, the Thompson Twins, Spandau Ballet and all that. What a lot of us heavy metalers said was faggy music or faggot music, like Wham. But of course, Judas Priest, the lead singer of Judas Priest was gay, who a lot of heavy metalers thought was so cool. <clears throat> and all that. But you know what? When a lot of uh, rock and rollers found out that Rob Halford was gay, I don't think they really gave a fucking shit. But you know what? I mean, this is kind of where, it's, where it, it sort of stems from, is an interest, an interest or a conflict. And everybody has that. And that's kind of what all, all the whole race, racial hatred or hatred and everything comes from. And even um, Depeche Mode song, people are people. Why should it be? I can't understand what makes a man hate another man. Please let me understand. Well, you know, no offense to David Gone, but he's a fucking moron. Again, you just don't understand anger. To answer David Gaughan's question, and people are people, is anger leads to hatred. Anger is what makes a man hate another man. Now, what the big difference is, in average people like you and me, we don't have anger issues. We're not angry 24 hours, seven days a week. However, groups, people who join groups like the KKK, the neo-Nazis, um, the white fascists of America, or whatever, or any other major God, God hates fags. That's another, that's another fucking hate group that's decided, uh, disguised as we're Christians and all that shit. No, they're not. They're a bunch of fucking angry, angry, hateful, spiteful people that can't stand fucking homosexuals. But you know what? That's a good example. Nobody loves everybody on this planet. I guarantee you. And so I think what irritates me most about racism or prejudice or hate is the fact that so many people claim they don't under, under fucking stand it. And uh, to me, yeah, I'm going to give my strong opinion. I think these people are fucking, are fucking dumb. They're ignorant. They have no common sense. They have no common sense. They have no sense of logic. That's my biggest problem, I think, with prejudice. Because everybody is. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what nationality you are. I don't care um, what country you're from or what social socialism or what, yeah, what government. But, the, you know, and that's, that's the damn truth. And um, it starts from, like, again, when you were in high school. I guarantee your high school was like that to a certain extent. You had little groups that went off in their own spaces. And every now and then they had their fucking clashes. But secretly, yes. Yes, a lot of us, punk, the punk rockers and heavy metalers, thought the, the new waves and the ska, they were a bunch of, you know, I'm not going to lie. They thought they were a bunch of faggot pussies. And, um, and of course, they walked around with their hair kind of styled like mine. Like a lot of people look at my hair and it's like, oh, you're you're into the straight cats or Elvis Presley or you're all rockabilly. Well, no, I've just kind of styled my hair like this, you know, ever since I was a kid. It's the only I, I mean, I changed it once and I kind of did a Bud Bundy kind of thing. But, you know, but anyway, 
But you know what? But this is something I have control of. This is another thing I have control of. Tattoos. Like me, another thing is I'm not, I'm not turned on by that. I don't like piercings. People have a bunch of shit in their nose and their lips and their eyebrow. And I don't like tattoos, especially on women. Like I see a girl with a fucking sleeve on her arm. It's just like, oh God. You know, I don't understand it. This is how, this is how I express myself. And, uh, but that's another way. That's another prejudice or a thing I have. I'm sure, you know, there are a lot of people out there who get tattoos who actually have a sleeve that they're probably are decent people. But you know what? I'm judging them. I don't necessarily want to be associated, but associated with them. I admit that. But what I find so funny is when I see older men, they regret it. I've met a lot of people who are in their 50s, who are in their 50s and 60s who have tattoos and they fucking regret it. And what I find so funny about people with tattoos is that they get all philosophical and they say, oh, well, this one, this one was at this time in my life. And uh, yeah, this one's, this one's this story about it. And I'm just like, yeah, fuck. Yeah, you're so philosophical and down to earth. But see, th there I am. That's me being prejudiced. But I find, I don't know, it's not that I, it's not that I hate that. I just find it kind of fucking funny. I mean, I'd rather not decorate my skin. I'd rather just express myself, like I said, this way. You know, which is kind of juvenile. Here I am, a 48-year-old man, and I'm wearing a t-shirt like I'm some 12-year-old fucking little teeny bopper but you know what I'd rather but you know what the truth is I'm not the only one in society who thinks that people with tattoos are fucking who look upon them as fucking low lifes or trailer trash uh, this makes me look childish and immature uh, you tell me is it better to be childish and immature or look like a low life and trailer trash um, I've talked to some people who've had tattoos who regret, who say they couldn't even get jobs. They were, People didn't even want to give them jobs. But anyway, but like I said, that's, I mean, just that, just that alone with the piercings and all that, that's all what I consider acceptable prejudice. And that's another form of prejudice when you're, it's funny I mentioned going to job. I mean, there you go. When you go and interview with a company, you can't dress the way you want. You can't show up there looking like a... I couldn't show up there looking like this. Say I wanted to get a work at a Trump with Donald... Uh, with, uh, a company with Trump or at Trump Hotel. Even as a fucking bellman or even as somebody just washing dishes. Would you advise me to wear this shirt to the job interview? Fuck no. It's the Trump fucking hotel. Or it's the Hilton or even if it's not a Trump. Trump is just, I'm just using that as an example. So people are judging, people are prejudiced every fucking day. Even having an opinion or being an opinionated person is a form of prejudice. It's all over. And yes, I guarantee with each and every one of you, there's a group. There's a group that you hate. There's an individual that you hate. There are small groups. It could be with, through anywhere. It could be bands. Like, are you a fan of Led Zeppelin? Are you a fan of Van Halen? Do you like Justin Bieber? Do you like Christina Aguilera? Do you like uh, the Jonas Brothers? Do you like classical music? Do you like country? Do you like Western? Do you like Willie Nelson? Do you like Willie Nelson? Do you like, uh, <clears throat> um, do you like heavy metal? Do you like death metal? Do you like satanic metal? You know, I guarantee you, Stop me when I, stop me when I name it. And you know what? Sports. Fuck. I've been back and forth to England. Over there in Britain, they'll kill people over soccer matches and over soccer teams. Have you ever seen Green Street hooligans and all that shit? I think it's so fucking stupid. I think it's so lame. But that, but people beating the fuck out of each other because they're a fan of the wrong soccer team or football team or whatever. And that's an example. Sports is perfect. Over here in LA, the LA Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants, some fucking asshole beat up and nearly killed from the, a fan of the San Francisco Giants when they were down here playing the LA, LA Dodgers. 
they killed, they nearly killed or beat up some Hispanic guy over because he was a Dodger or some bullshit. Oh, gee, tell me, oh, was that racism? No, maybe not about color of your skin or culture, but they, but that to me, that's worse. Oh, let's kill him because he's a fucking Dodger fan. What are you a fan of? What team do you hate? Do you hate the San Francisco Giants? Do you hate the Dodgers? Do you, how about the New York Yastings, the Boston Red Sox? Stop me. Stop me when I name a team that if I dare say I'm a fan of, that you're going to beat the living shit out of me of. Same thing with football. Are you 49ers fan? The Rams. The Rams are going to the Super Bowl. Are you pissed off at that? You know, are you pissed off about that? How about the New England Patriots? Are you fucking Tom Brady fan? Will you get mad at me because, uh, you know, I agree with that he's a fucking cheat and deflates his balls when he ought to suck his own balls? <laughs> you know, stop me when I name a, a team that you want to kill over or that you want to hate me because I'm a fan of or whatever. I'm not even into sports. I don't. And I, I and yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to tell about all you sports fans out there. You're all a bunch of fucking idiots if you raise a finger or a fist and want to beat the fuck or punch anybody in the face who says to you in your face, oh, your team fucking sucks. Or the Boston Red Sox, the New York Yankees can suck my balls. The New England Patriots suck dick. The Seattle Seahawks suck. The Atlanta Falcons suck. You know? You know, fuck all of you people, you know? I mean, uh, to me, that's stupid. But you know what? That's, that's considered racism. You know, what, whatever. And uh, you're all, all of you are. That's sports and that's music. Well, shall I move on to religion? Okay, Catholicism, Mormonism, Buddhism, Judaism, um, Scientology. Uh, Hindu, Hindi, um, uh, Catholic, Christian, Protestant, uh, uh, Catholics, Christians, Protestants, um, Lutherans, Baptists, stop me when I come across a religion that you won't marry, you won't date, you won't fuck, or you won't associate with, or a religion who has their own church that you won't dare step, step one fucking foot in. <clears throat> that covers religion. Now there's cultures. There's cultures, society. Come on. There's plenty, there's plenty of races. There's plenty, plenty of cultures and societies who have a way of life, a way of thinking, uh, t traditions, holiday traditions, um, whatever, um, Beliefs, beliefs that you don't like. You don't like any. I, I watched a National Geographic or I watched, I've watched the Discovery Channel, National Geographic in India. All right. There's a certain religious group or a certain culture or a certain class of people in there. You know what their philosophy is? They arrange marriages for their children. Now, here's the kick. When their children, when the, uh, another family that has a daughter that reaches eight years old and they have a son that reaches eight years old, they force them together, make them get married at the age of eight. Now, do they fuck and do they live together? No. They go through puberty and at the time when they're 15, 16, they unite the child couple and then that's when they get together, they live together as husband or wife and that's when they fuck is when they're kind of more towards the post pubescent. Now, now, is that something you're gonna do when you raise your kids in America and a philosophy that we live by? No. Do you really wanna associate with yourself with that, that Indian class of people or Indian culture? No. And also over in India, the cow is considered sacred. It's like a god. They do not eat cows. The Indian people are disgusted at all of our In-N-Out burgers, McDonald's, fucking Burger King, uh, all of our burger joints. A cow is a fucking, is a, is a meal. We slaughter them by the millions here. We graciously eat them for steak, for steak, for burgers, for uh, meatloaf, for sloppy joes, you name it. 
we are fucking meat eaters. The fucking Indian people would be like, these fucking Americans are sick. There they go. That's their fucking opinion. They're entitled to it. That opinion leads to prejudice. That's why we don't, that's why we have more Hispanics here than we have a bunch of Indians and all that. You know? Surprised they come here and own 7 Elevens and actually sell hot dogs and hamburgers. Because the cow is so fucking hated. This cow is so fucking sacred in their damn country. <clears throat> but it's a truth. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Google this stuff if you don't believe me. I saw another special about a northern African tribe. This is in Africa. Their tradition is how they bring a son who comes of age and trains him, uh, trains him to be a man. One of his, yeah, they, it's so stupid. It's, it's their, it's their philosophy on how a man becomes a man. Uh, basically when they take a son and, and the thing is, this is like a homosexual tribe. Anyway, one of the tests that, that a 14 year old boy has to go through is he's got to suck off, suck off. I'm not kidding. Give blowjobs head to several guys of the tribe and he's got to swallow, swallow as much semen as he can. If he can deep throat, take their big black cocks all the way down to the base, swallow, swallow gallons of cum, guess what? All the men in the tribe, or especially the men, the boy's father says, you're a real man. Now, is that our philosophy here in America? When you were 14 years old, did you have to suck off a bunch of guys? Your father make you do that and swallow gallon cum and deep throat. And now you can walk around here with your head held up high saying, yeah, I'm a real man because I can deep throat dick and, and swallow gallons of cum. No, you can't. Again, Google that if, if you think I'm wrong. I, unless these TV shows and shit that I read or see is, are lying. I don't know. Go Google, put, type in African tribes that suck mean dick. <laughs> but even in Greek, in Greek mythology, homosexuality was considered a substitute and all that. <clears throat> but it's all over, man. I guarantee you, if you get out in the world, if you get out of this damn country or get out of the state you're living and really go take a look at the world around you, you're going to find that you aren't going to like the people you see. You aren't going to like their behavior. You aren't going to like the way they dress. You aren't going to like the way they look. You aren't going to like the way they think. You aren't going to like the way they fucking act. You aren't going to like about what they believe. You're not going to like their social traditions. You're not going to like their fucking habits. There's another culture, and I think it's the Indian culture. Um, and I've and this is hands-on experience because I've talked to fucking girls, who've uh, and girls or guys who've dormed with these people in colleges. And I think it's the Indian culture. They don't believe in flushing toilet paper down the toilet. They wipe their fucking pussies and their asses and throw the shit toilet paper in a garbage can right next to where you got to take a shit. Now, that's not what we believe in America, do we? We don't have a waste paper basket full of toilet paper, chock full of, of shit. We flush it down the toilet. We literally get rid of that. But that's just part of their fucking culture. And I trust me, I've talked to some American people who've dormed with these people and they've had to live with what, yeah, I, I call, I'm sure a lot of other American people would call a disgusting living habit. But you know what? That's just, that's just, uh, you know, that's just different cultures. That's just different societies. And you know what? I'm sorry, but uh, we're all fucking prejudiced. We're all sort of racist. And uh, unlike a lot of people think, they think it's because the color or the shape of their head or their eyes or whatever <clears throat> and all that. And part of their appearance where it's not necessarily about that. It's all about everything I just said their whole culture, their whole society, their whole 
religion, their beliefs, their acts, their habits, their thoughts, and all that shit. And uh, that's honestly, that's another thing I believe about sort of prejudice and racism and all that shit. That's what I think it's based on. And you know what? I don't know. It's funny. Because I think there's a lot of uh, what also would I consider justifiable, um, justifiable hatred and prejudice. But you know what? And we're programmed. Even Hollywood sort of programs. I mean... One of the best, best best movies about prejudice or racism that was a movie that's blatantly about race, that movie American History X. I don't know if you saw that. Anyway, I'll give a quick rundown. Basically, it's about a guy whose kid, whose father gets murdered trying to put out the fire of a, of a black drug house or whatever. Anyway, he gets mad. It builds up. It shows how he became racist. He becomes a neo-Nazi. Anyway, he gets in trouble. He goes to jail, <clears throat> whatever. But then he's forced to ask. It was a black man who comes to basically bail his ass out. And the black man asks him a million-dollar question. He says, has there any anything you've done with your life now that has made anything you've done lately or at all since you've taken on this state of mind that has made your life better and he shakes his head no, because he was basically had the main characteristic of a racist and pissed off all the time. And, um, you know, and that was the message. And the message was that basically major, major hatred or it comes from fucking anger and it comes from being mad. And you know what? His anger and his upset and his personal experience are legit and they're understandable qualities of what made him be completely freaking full of hate and racist. There's other movies though that I think have subliminal hate matrix, uh, subliminal hate messages. Like take The Outsiders. Like The Outsiders, that comes back where I talk about just what I was talking about high school. You got the punk rockers, you got this. Well, The Outsiders, it was about the Socias, Socias and the Greasers. There we go. What do we have there? What I was explaining, two conflicts of interest. You know, two people, two groups of kids who don't get along. And how does it end? They have a big fucking rumble. But it's on, are the kids on either side really bad? Are they really terrible? They only talk about the greaser side and, and they tell their story. So, of course, you have a lot of sympathy and a lot of... <clears throat> and you shed tears for the, you know, Tom Cruise and all the whole Brat Pack and, you know, Patrick Swayze and little Johnny and Matt Dillon and all that. <clears throat> sort of tells their struggle. <laughs> I mean, other but the socias, I guess, are uh, are kind of people too, or the preppies, or the jocks, or whatever. You know, I don't think they're bad people. They might be a little bit arrogant, or whatever. And I, and if you're wondering, what did I hang out with? I was a heavy metaler who kind of hanged hung out with the jocks and all that, because I had a good friend of mine who was a jock who was also into hard, who was also into kind of uh, rock and roll or hard rock. And I had another good friend. He was also he was a musician and all that. So we were sort of part of that group and sort of mixed. But um, but you know that's that's one. And then uh, another movie, believe it or not, is my big fat Greek wedding. And uh, that's about marrying somebody of a different race. You know the bullshit you kind of got to go through and why a lot of people say, oh, I like this particular race, but I would never marry. I would never marry him. You know, I'm sure you heard people say that. Like, oh, I like black guys. I just don't want to date them. Or I'm not prejudiced, but I would never date a black guy. <laughs> well, my big fat Greek wedding, it's sort of a chick flick. That's another sort of subliminal racist movie. It's about this Greek family and this girl starts dating this sort of non-Greek guy and, you know, and they're, <clears throat> they don't really approve of it. And then the father, of course, doesn't approve of it. So they're making it a hard time for him, you know. 
they had him get baptized as a uh, Orthodox Roman Catholic or something like that, a Roman Greek or whatever. He had to confer to all those religions, basically made the guy put his dick between his legs in order to marry. You know, I, I joke around, I should have I should have said they should have called the movie My Big Fat Greek Wife. <laughs> you know, and it, I don't know, it was sort of degrading. It, it was, to me, it was kind of racist. And then the brothers... You know, or making the guys, the guys say uh, insulting messages about his dick, or about, you know, oh, say say this statement, say that, and they're, and uh, her family is like totally fucking with the guy and all that, and you know, in my opinion, he sort of put up with a bunch of shit just to marry marry into this fucking Greek family who thought they were the shit, you know, and uh, to me, it's kind of it's kind of racist, and the big pop that they made a joke at. And made a, made fun of, and this just shows you, uh, you know, the different parts of the cult. So when when the mother, when they go to have dinner with the family, and uh, um, and she brings a bunt cake, and then the Greek mother doesn't even know what the fuck it is, and and watching the movie, I'm looking at it's like, oh my god, how long is how long have these Greek idiots been in America, and they don't know what a fucking bunt cake is. You know, um, and they're trying to make it funny and make it, but I, I, maybe I read into it more. I thought it was stupid and I thought she was a moron, but they played. So I guess that there's, well, we got to play a joke against the Greek people. So she puts a little flower in the middle of the bun cake and was parading it around because she didn't know what the fuck it was. <clears throat> so we figured, well... We've been making this poor white guy look like a stupid idiot and a stupid asshole throughout the movie, so maybe we'll make the Greek family look like they're stupid. And of course, she's embarrassed. She's obviously kind of embarrassed to be a Greek and follow all the bullshit, um, bullshit Greek traditions in dating and courting and getting married. And you know what? And I think that's where kind of a lot of racism comes from. It's like... They have a saying when it comes to traveling the world or going and doing a part with go with different countries. They, they, it's called when in Rome, do as Romans. When in Greece, do as Greeks. When in America, do as Americans. You know, and this is a classic Greek family who obviously hasn't. So this movie is sort of about a classic traditional Greek family who's been away from Greece or out of Greece for a long time, but, they, you know, they just haven't realized it and they haven't fucking accepted it. <clears throat> but it's acceptable racial... It's, people don't consider it racist. Number one, it's white-on-white white racism, in a sense. And they make it kind of goofy, and they make it... And they kind of, like, sort of put blinders on your eyes. They sort of hide it. But if you really sit back and really look at the movie you'll see that it's got racism, just like The Outsiders. And there's a, there's a lot of fucking Hollywood movies like that. So, you know, ever since you're a kid watching these movies or whatever, it's, you know, you know, that uh, pop culture and Hollywood. And I think they also take a lot of, uh, a lot of portrayals, uh, a lot of pot shots at racism and give examples of racism and all that subliminal messages of racism and all that is since you're a kid high school different groups and just all that like it's made. furthermore <clears throat> another thing that everybody can uh, are passionate about their hatred is presidents I mean, come on, from John F. Kennedy to Lyndon B. Johnson to Richard Nixon to Jimmy Carter to Ronald Reagan to the first George W. Bush to Bill Clinton to the second George to Barack Obama. I mean, stop me if I didn't name a president that you absolutely hate. Oh, and I forgot about our current one, Donald Trump. You want to see, you want, you want a good definition of fucking hatred and prejudice. Look at all these fucking assholes now or who are still so damn upset about our president it's just like well that's the big question that i need that you need to ask all these liberals all these democrats two years after the fact 
I go, has there been anything that you've done since, since, since Donald Trump has taken office? Has there been anything you've said, anything you've done, or any actions you've taken since Trump has been president that has made your life better, pleasant, or even more happier about the fact? <clears throat> Probably the answer is no. Probably none of these liberals or Democrats or Nancy Pelosi or anybody else would answer no. Because at the end of the day, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to break it to somebody, to these people, these liberals, when they wake up tomorrow, Donald Trump is still going to be fucking president. Deal with it. Get over it. Let it go. But that's, that's where... Everybody believes in justifiable hatred and, president, uh, and prejudice. Is who the fuck is going to be our president or politicians and the government and all that. So if none of the groups, none of the musical groups, religious groups, cultural habits, cultural societies, I guarantee you there's a politician out there whose balls you want to rip off whose throat you want to slash, or who you absolutely depest, or even a political group, whether it's the Democrats, whether it's Republicans, whether it's the Independents, the Independents, the Green Party, the, uh, what is that, the Tea Party or whatever. There's got to be a politician or political group that you hate. And on that note... I hope I proved my point about prejudice, about racism, about hate. You're all, you're all a bunch of opinionated, spiteful, hateful, prejudiced, racist people. Accept it. Deal with it. Get over it. Live with it. Because there's somebody, there's someone, somebody, or a group that you either absolutely hate, dislike, want to disassociate with yourself, just disassociate with yourself with, don't like, don't want to have anything, don't have anything you want to do with, definitely have a strong opinion about. So, there. That's my opinion about racism and about all that bullshit, so, um, enjoy, enjoy, and, uh, uh, mind your comments, mind your comments, uh, I'm just warning you, mind your comments and what you say in my comment section, they will be deleted if, if I don't like, if I find what you have to say, uh, rude, rude, or insulting, you know. Until then, have a good one. Admire my Van Halen shirt for one more time, and I will see you later.